how's everybody doing? All right, wonderful. Well, it is such a pleasure to be here with you, and it's particularly an honor to get to share the stage today with Ash and the Ellen MacArthur team, who have been our partners from the very beginning of our circular economy journey. And I also really want to acknowledge Joel and Lauren and the whole Green Biz team, I think, for really accelerating this dialogue, for creating spaces like this for us to ask the tough questions and to come together. So I think we should give them a round of applause. So, people love stuff. In the 20th century, global raw material use rose at twice the rate of population growth. And just last year, in 2018, Earth Overshoot Day fell on August 1st. This means that currently we need 1.7 Earths to support our demand for raw materials and our emissions of carbon dioxide. So is our demand for stuff inherently unsustainable? Or is the issue with how we take, make, and waste it? So as you all probably know since you're here today, our global economy runs on billions and billions of pounds of materials that's extracted, grown, manufactured, shipped around, used, used up, and sadly, for the most part, still sent to landfill or ends up in the natural environment. So to change this, one thing we know is we need to understand a lot more about our materials. Where are they? What's in them? What could we do with them? So I would propose a question. What if we saw stuff as information? What if we looked at all of these materials spanning around the globe, moving around, as billions and trillions of bits of data? This is an inspiring question to us at Google, because as you probably know, we love a good data challenge. And it really enables us to think about the role that we can play in utilizing our technology, our platforms, and our expertise to partner in advancing this critical mission that we're all on together. So our vision is actually kind of simple. We want a circular Google in a sustainable world. Now, of course, getting there is as inspiring as it is daunting. It means the entire system needs to change, as Joel was just talking about. It means we need to rewire our economy, our relationship to natural resources. And for us, it's really important that we start at home, that we start with what we know that we can do and what we can change in our operations. And so our work on circular economy is part of our even larger vision to strive to build sustainability into everything that we do. And so as we have embarked on this journey in close partnership with the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, we wanted to lay out a set of principles that would really guide and ground our work. And these are very much inspired by the foundation, but we've adapted them a little bit for our own purposes. So the first is about designing out waste and pollution. We need to bring in circularity from the start so today's products can become tomorrow's inputs. We also need to keep our products and materials in use, keep things going as long as possible, of course being mindful of safety and quality. And lastly, we need to promote safe chemistry and healthy materials. Because once we put a product out into the world, we can't change its chemistry. So we need to know it's safe for people and planet. And so these principles have really inspired us. And they brought us to this point in our journey where we wanted to kind of lay down a marker and set an ambitious goal for ourselves. So I'm really excited to share that goal with you all for the first time today. So our goal for Google is to maximize the reuse of finite resources across our operations, our products, and our supply chain, and to enable others to do the same. And so as we go about thinking, how will we reach this goal? We again kind of turned to our hypothesis that we can think about the circular economy partially as a data problem. So we approached it kind of like an algorithm. And so we first wanted to understand what are the key areas that we can influence in our own business. And so for us, that's our workplaces, our consumer electronics, and our data centers, and the supply chains that support them. And so we went about doing a bunch of material mapping. Probably many of you have done a similar exercise to this. 
And we also took another page out of the book of the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. You're probably familiar with their iconic butterfly diagram. So we looked at first the biological materials that are flowing through our system, fibers, timber, et cetera. And then we also looked at the technical, minerals, glass, plastics. But although mapping this was not easy, this was really just the first step. Then we said we want to set a series of very specific time-bound sub-goals that enable us to know that we're intervening at the right place to drive a more circular outcome. So that's what we've done. And you can see, same thing for our consumer electronics, the biological and the technical, and then for our data centers, all technical. And the data centers are actually where I think we have some of the most interesting and promising case studies. So I'll share two with you very briefly. The first is really about keeping products and materials in use. So for anyone who's been to a data center or even seen a picture inside a data center, you know that data centers are filled with thousands and thousands of servers. So we have worked to apply circular economy at scale to how we manage those servers. So first, we're taking parts from our old machines to upgrade our servers. Then we're actually doing a bunch of our own remanufacturing. When we're done with stuff, we can wipe it clean, sell it on secondary markets. We did this with about 2.1 million units last year. And then the rest gets responsibly recycled. So in this way, we're not only dramatically reducing our need for raw materials, but we're also saving hundreds of millions of dollars. And the other insight we've gained is around designing out waste. In this case, it is energy waste. So we have been applying machine learning to the cooling system in our data center. Basically what we did is we took a bunch of data from sensors, power, temperature, pump speeds, and then we created an AI-powered efficiency recommendation system. And by doing this, we were able to reduce the energy use required for the cooling system in the data center by 30%. And so what this says to us is that AI is gonna play a critical role in accelerating this transition to the circular economy. Imagine the opportunity we could have to redesign whole systems, to rewire supply chains and reverse logistics networks. So we are excited to fully explore this opportunity. So as you probably know, there is a great data point out there from Accenture that says, if we can get this right, if we can fully realize a circular economy by 2030, there is an additional $4.5 trillion of value that could be realized. And we are tremendously inspired by this potential future of abundance that will also have benefit for people and for the planet. But of course, this is far bigger than any one company. This transition will truly require all of us. It will require non-traditional partnerships. It will require policymakers, community groups, and individuals to all get involved. And as I shared, as part of our new goal, we want to enable everyone. So we want to start with our partners, with our suppliers, and then ultimately the billions of Google users who are interacting with our products every day. So we hope that you will join us on this journey. We are tremendously excited for the road ahead. And if you're interested in learning a little bit more about what I shared today, check out our new white paper on our website. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.